Hi everyone, uh, I am Itesh Rathi. I am the founder of Atvik Foods. We are India's uh, leading brand dealing in camel milk and camel milk products. So on 22nd of June, uh, we celebrate World Camel Day. And in the lines of that, today we have uh, invited Dr. Sahu from uh, National Research Center on Camels. Uh, Mr. Sahu has a PhD in animal nutrition and has more than 500 publications to his name and he has been awarded a lifetime achievement award for his contribution in animal nutrition and welfare. Uh, Mr. Sao, uh, very warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Zahidashji. Uh, thank you for uh, Advik Foods, uh, representing Advik Foods and also uh, pioneer in developing uh, camel milk products and marketing. Thank you, sir. So, uh, sir, I would like to start with uh, something very basic. Uh, our idea is to, you know, get people know more about camels and uh, your institute, the National Research Center on Camels, which is located in Bikane, uh, has been having a, you know, pivotal role. They have been playing a pivotal role in uh, creating awareness around camels and uh, uh, benefit, uh, benefits which are to for camel farmers and so many things. So I would like to know, like uh, you know, for our viewers, what is NRCC? Uh, why was it established, and how is it helping uh, camels? Uh, to uh, brief you, actually, this NRCC is uh, established as a project directorate on camel. That is in uh, 5th July 1984. And the main focus was to really address the Janplaja and the people associated with the Janplaja. So as a whole, you can say uh, uh, the uh, development of camel population and their well-being. And at the same time, taking uh, looking after the well-being of the communities who are associated with uh, rearing of camel. So then uh, it became a national research center and camel is upgraded to that. And uh, this is located at uh, Jorbir area of Bikanir. This is uh, nearly 10 kilometers away from main city. And uh, this center is uh, the primary focus is definitely the basic and applied research. And besides that, uh, uh, where uh, the, the research should be focusing on camel health and production. And at the same time, the products development and also extension of the know-how to the uh, stakeholders. So this was the uh, mandate of this uh, National Research Center in Kamet. And we have a vision that, uh, as I initially uh, remarked, that uh, this institute is for the camel and also the people uh, with the camel. So in that line, we are uh, projecting camel as a multi-utility animal, not only camel as sheep of the desert, not only camel as the dairy animal, but camel as a whole, it should provide livelihood security to the uh, people who are uh, attached to it. So in that line, uh, you can uh, attach all other things like uh, skin, wool, bones, uh, and their products development, and at the same time, the biggest uh, return which farmers can get, that is particularly from ecotourism, where the camel riding, safari, sports, festivity, uh, festival, uh, cultural programs, all sorts of things. So uh, this is uh, what uh, we are looking at, and uh, definitely being uh, uh, research institutes and uh, thinking camel as a dairy animal is a new concept and uh, for the last 10 years, uh, more than 10 years, this concept has come and uh, you, you are also party to that uh, in pro um, promoting uh, camel dairy, particularly at Gujarat regions and I must uh, congratulate you and also now the new party like Amul and others, those who are actually uh, benefiting the community in uh, in a direction where at least besides uh, camels traditional usage they can go for 
milk marketing and developing camelage dairy and uh, at the same time the other aspects why uh, means we cannot compete with uh, cattle and buffalo so for milk cattle and buffalo is there but for and that is you can say a bovine group then the non bovine group there are many uh, sheep goats uh, camel equines and others so amongst all these definitely camel gives more milk and its uh, potential is um, uh, more than the native cattle so in that way uh, looking at uh, camel as a dairy animal has a very good future only thing is uh, its collection marketing and projecting camel in uh, not as a uh, daily consumption rather as a therapeutic consumption or you can say uh, putting camel towards uh, from sheep of the desert towards a storehouse of medicine so that that uh, uh, view we have to generate so that the camel rearers can get uh the price for the camel milk not price for uh, similar to cattle and buffalo milk so that way uh, you people are doing great job and i think collecting at a price of say 50 rupees from the camel farmers definitely uh, giving benefit to the camel farmers on the basis of uh, fat percentage if we compare with cattle and buffalo milk then three times the price of uh, price it should fetch based on fat content that is 15 to 18 rupees and you, you people are uh, giving uh, 50 rupees and this center is also uh, pricing it at 50 rupees now so that way at least the people who are rearing camel for dairy they will get some share of their um, uh, means projecting camel as dairy okay uh, thank you so much for uh, you know briefing us about uh, the role which uh, in terms of milk camel milk has compared to other cattle milk that uh, first thing you mentioned that you know we should not compare it uh, that is very right and this is what we also uh, tell uh, people that you know it has a, you compare it with with a natural medicine rather than milk to uh, you know yes this is something which has a lot of uh, medicinal potential i would say uh, mr sahu you mentioned about uh, research uh, uh, can you please uh, throw light on some important research activities which has been done um, carried out by nrcc in the past or something which is currently going on uh if we just uh, partition the different area of research then one is uh, first definitely the breed improvement program so under that breed improvement program at least uh, nine breeds of camels are identified and they are uh, means uh, documented so besides that there are many other breeds which are few in numbers but they are also uh, uh, means undergoing characterization and in uh, times to come i think we will be able to go for their characterization so based on that the camel breeds what the center is presently having uh, uh, that is we are having four breeds out of nine because uh, all the nine breeds it is difficult uh, to uh, put at one place because these breeds are developed based on localized uh, um, uh, ecology so suppose kharai camel is a breed of coastal gujarat gujarat you should not keep it here because they want uh, say swimming in the sea and getting into the uh, phytoplankton so that way the breeds are developed based on uh, local uh, ecology so that way four breeds what we are keeping here that is to just uh, generate data on uh, breeding and genetic profile of animals so that uh, if you think of say dairy then we have to select certain animals where the dairy potential can be improved and uh, so the four breeds what i am uh, focusing that is the highest population deccanary the next highest jaisalmer then mevari and uh, the from gujarat we have uh, that kachi uh, breeds which is actually giving the highest milk amongst all these four so in that way if we go for selection of animals who are giving uh, 
uh, highest quantity of milk, particularly the male, and also the mothering ability of the female. So based that characteristics we are documenting, and uh, we are also uh, uh, going for some sorts of selection. That way, during this time period, uh, though 2010 to 2022, I think we have uh, we, we achieved uh, a nearly 25 percent increase in their uh, milk production potential. So, uh, say if it was uh, three or 3.5, now we are four and 4.5. The average milk yield of this uh, campus, and amongst them, the kachi breed it is nearly five, followed by four uh, both uh, Jaisalmeri and uh, uh, Mabari. Then 3.5 is uh, our Bikaneri. So uh, why I am putting these figures? The reason being our focus should be on Bikaneri and Jaisalmeri. Those okay. actually dominates the population. So any uh, percentage increase in this population, it actually increases the milk yield of the uh, total milk output from the uh, camel population what India have. So that way uh, we can also able to meet the demand of milk which is when we are projecting camel age dairy and projecting the camel milk as nutraceutical meal or as a therapeutic adjuvant to many diseases. So just a calculation I will uh, I will put forward before you. Now the India's diabetic population is nearly 74 million. So on if you just target the diabetic population of India to get at least 500 ml of milk a day uh, to uh, means one glass morning, one glass evening. So that way, the requirement is so much that the present population, what India is having, we need 600 times population of uh, population to sustain, to meet that demand. So that way, the threat, but actually India is facing, that is a 37% decline in camel population. We can resist that tree if we promote camel as a dairy and uh, putting that camel milk in this therapeutic purposes. So this is one area that is particularly with respect to breeding and uh, genetic selections we are working. The next area uh, with respect to say reproduction, that is uh, really a difficult phenomenon, but with, uh, so far as camel is concerned, the, there are two reasons. One is uh, camel is seasonal breeders and its uh, pregnancy is 13 months. So when the pregnancy is 13 months, so this cycle, seasonal cycle, following a seasonal cycle is always difficult because it cross one month uh, than the one year, uh, what is the calendar year. So the, and there is also the uh, AI problem because the semen is having a gelling property. So it is not easy to go for artificial insemination of promising germplasm and uh, so that we can rapidly go for uh, high yielders or high potential animals like that. So this is uh, with respect to reproduction and we are uh, trying our best to go for any diluents which can sustain this uh, gelling property and we can go for uh, artificial insemination. Then with respect to nutrition, uh, this is this institute is the first, I think, uh, in the world, I can say, because uh, National, Research Center, National Research Council, which is actually governed by USA, actually USA is not having any camel population now, but uh, they have uh, devised it in way back 1980. And uh, NRC camel, they have developed a, a, a nutrient requirement of camel. So that is being revised, uh, will be revised soon, 22. We have already com compiled information submitted and it is under publication. So uh, 2009, 13 first publication came on Newton Recurrent Camel. Then 2022, it will be the second publication. Uh, so based on that, the requirement of different type of camel, say camel calf, then the, during the growing phase, during the reproduction phase, then uh, during lactation phase. So all these uh, physiological stages, we can uh, address the nutrient requirement, whether camel is getting uh, enough nutrient, uh, nutrients for its uh, functionality or not. And again, at the same time, 
since we are going for camel milk as a therapeutic adjuvant and why we are going because camel milk has some therapeutic properties in the in it like it has uh, three times insulin uh, five times vitamin c uh, two times zinc and uh, there are similarly the lactoferrin uh, uh, contents the uh, lysozyme content all these uh, are unique in camel milk and it has no uh, beta lactoglobulin which is uh, a allergy producing uh, con- uh, biochemical in in, in in all other milk so anybody uh, who uh, to maintain this these properties camel needs to uh, follow a dietary pattern so uh, if we uh, means convert them straight to stop feeding there is possibility that the uh, camel milk's medicinal property may go down so that uh, is another angle which you need to protect through feeding and management so this is one area we are focusing then uh, there is definitely the health the health concern people are facing but uh, when uh, uh, there are two three important diseases uh, in camel one is skin diseases then uh, there is uh, sara uh, trypanosomiasis then uh, some of the uh, like uh, outbreaks of cppr or something like that camel pox so uh, the center is uh, focusing on both uh, diseases and healthcare management and they have developed a protocol for uh, say particularly skin we have patented one uh, medicines based on oil oil based uh, medicines that is uh, that can be applied and uh, you can get rid of uh, this uh, skin anomalies in camel then another area which is of quite interesting uh, uh, which actually involves uh, all our human health too that is uh, the camel immunoglobulin is uh, typical so this is uh, unique compared to our uh, human immunoglobulin the size of camel immunoglobulin is 1/10 the size of human immunoglobulin so that way we generally refer camel immunoglobulin as nano bodies and uh, when it is nano nano means it can pass many barriers which actually uh, for other, if you go for uh, say camel milk it also contains immunoglobulin camel uh, serum it also contains immunoglobulin when we use these in therapeutic purposes then the immunoglobulin whatever they are in the camel milk or camel serum or the fluids what we are getting from camel they they can uh, we can target some nano medicine approach so in that way the serum which is being used uh, for uh, say um, uh, you can say uh, toxoid production equine serum is being used pig serum is being used there we can go for camel serum and uh, one anti snake venom project we have we have collaboration with uh, five different countries and uh, and here in india with iisc bangalore where we are uh, using this camel uh, nano bodies for this uh, anti venom act- uh, increasing the anti venom activity because whatever anti venom uh, anti snake venom is available in india they are not full proof to all type of snakes in india and the typical snakes found in uh, desert they are not immune to this anti snake venom which is usually available in the market so we can go for this uh, new lead uh, devised anti snake venom based on camel serum this is one area then another area is uh, uh, antibiotic resistance this is a phenomena which every people uh, all human beings are facing uh, because of uh, Uh, you can say extensive use of antibiotics so if you uh, the camel immunoglobulin globulins they help the uh, 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 human cell layer where the where the antibiotic resistance it uh, fetches so the lipid bilayer bilayer action is uh, the camel immunoglobulins modulates the lipid bilayer in the human cells so that it will not Uh, resist the antibiotic which is being administered so that way it facilitates antibiotics uh, use in 
Uh, so these two is a very big area, and uh, the if uh, means uh, the, uh, the him uh, the medicals medicos and uh, our uh, veterinarians, particularly the Camel Institute, they can work together. I think this is a great area which will give more scope for camel husbandry uh, in a uh, very new directions and uh, also demand of camel for these purposes. Like you must be knowing during COVID, we required a huge amount of vaccine preparations and uh, the Pune, uh, that, uh, that laboratory, they are having a very uh, large equine farm to get equine serum. Similarly, such uh, vaccine production unit, serum production unit like Serum Institute of India, they can also have a big camel farm for manufacturing serum and other things. So this is uh, uh, all about and the other area, I think uh, that is mostly ecotourism. So that area I just briefed earlier. So any any related questions, if you want, then I'll so like uh, first of all uh, thank you for uh, you know throwing uh, light on all the means you have thrown light from 360 degree you know like uh, not only from we uh, we covered uh, elements like uh, reproduction and uh, breeding in the camels but we also touched upon like uh, how camel milk can be helpful in multiple diseases and nrcc has been a pioneer in this thing uh, they have been part of a, a research activity which uh, demonstrated that you know camel milk is actually helpful in diabetes they uh, they have also touched upon camel milk and autism if i'm not wrong and rcc has been uh, yes. doing a research on that as well and then uh, you talked about uh, diseases which camel faces like uh, obviously every animal has uh, specific diseases so we touched upon that and what I found um, the most interesting uh, part from uh, your, you know, your discussion is, was that uh, the nanobodies which you talked about, which is present in, uh, you know, camel milk and it can be harvested to create, uh, you know, a lot many things like maybe uh, anti-venom you mentioned, you mentioned uh, antibiotic resistance and even like, uh, as you said, the serum institute which has uh, equine serum uh, for vaccine production camel serum can be that thing as we all know that uh, camel milk and all they are very good for your uh, immune system the nanobodies which you mentioned that easily passes through the various filters and you know it actually gets absorbed in the body so i yes. also sense a huge uh, you know a future a huge opportunity in the times to come if we are able to harness that and uh, if it is uh, you know actually working then there will be many uh, you know pharma industry who would be interested in these kind of things yes and presently as uh, you touched upon the um, uh, collaboration with other institutes we have collaboration with uh, central sheep and wool research institute to work on camel wool and fibers and uh, another institute national institute of natural fiber and technology to work on uh, camel uh, wool or hair keratin and its medicinal uses this is one then uh, we are also having collaboration with sp medical college here at pikani to work on camel milk in diabetes camel milk in dengue and uh, 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 camel milk in tuberculosis so these three we are also focusing uh, in times to come sure. and uh, besides that uh, uh, we are also uh, some collaboration and we'll uh, be interested to collaborate you people also where the stakeholder uh, can uh, means you can uh, send stakeholder for training and uh, this thing so that they will be an asset to uh, the industry people in uh, pro propagating the things. Like say uh, with uh, Narm Hyderabad, recently we have one uh, uh, MOU where a idea that is uh, a, um, a startup program 
where we can uh, 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 go for any startup initiative like say uh, the biggest problem is collection suppose if there is uh, uh, some startup come come up with uh, an idea that how to collect milk from the people and uh, then then uh, they they can t- uh, contact uh, the processing units where it will be processed then the uh, transportation then marketing and the people who are concerned with say with respect to different diseases uh, so this is uh, one area uh, we need to focus uh, together so that uh, the uh, unless marketing will be there uh, we cannot uh, go on uh, paying the farmers 50 rupees for the milk and expect that they will uh, get benefit from camel farming they have they they have it means they they should be in high demand for providing camel milk then only the all quota of milk what is being produced today and the all quota of milk which is in demand as i projected nearly 600 times demand is there then that way people will come into this profession so today uh, fortunately uh, 10 people from uh, gujarat they came for training and i inquired from them and uh, the multiplication with those farmers it was nearly five times suppose somebody was ten, having 10 camels now he is having 50 somebody is having say 20 camels now he is having 100 so that way it can be multiplied then definitely the uh, quantity of milk which is in demand today can be uh, get from those people so uh, these are some of the area and uh, i think this is in uh, other way we will be helping the humanity and this is the uh, this is a great message on the eve of world camel day that yes camel is uh, a, 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 that, that is a boon of lord shiva and we are rearing them to uh, spread that boon to the people who are uh, at the uh, we can say uh, um, lord shiva's chaya <laughs> so this is this is a, a, in other words you can say a service to mankind through camel rearing and uh, spreading camel milk in um, for medicinal purposes you said it rightly that you know uh, there are many challenges associated with uh, camel milk uh, for the biggest challenge being the awareness uh, as we were discussing just now that you know it has uh, so many therapeutic values that uh, means people are not aware of uh, there are uh, i also came to know couple of things like uh, anti venom activity today only so means like uh, the public in general they are a lot less aware about uh, camel milk in all means forget the benefits and all but they are not even aware that camel also gives milk that kind of uh, you know level of awareness is required uh, to get no to people to know more about camel milk and their benefits and uh, this is just uh, you know as you said on world camel day this uh, we also hope that in the times to come the all the stakeholders means uh, right from the research to breeders to camels to uh, businesses startups and uh, the customer all uh, have a you know kind of a win win situation so uh, my uh, other question is that you know th- finally finally i will link link with you that is the processing and products development <laughs> so so yeah, unless we process the camel milk we cannot uh, transport the camel milk to yes. other places so that is one area uh, if you go for processing then what type of processing in what way it should be uh, reached to the people then going for products development where advik is uh, definitely they have come up with many good products and similarly when, uh, now the nrcc is also working on that since many years and I, th- I think we have 20 different products with us but uh, unfortunately uh, the marketing angle that is and uh, the acceptability as you rightly told the people should accept camel milk nobody 
uh, usually like camel milk uh, if there will be option for uh, cow milk and camel milk because it is it is having some different taste but at the same time if, if people will take medicines yes. so if you, whether it is bitter or whatever so people will take medicines so camel milk should be taken as medicines this is my message yes. uh, on this uh, on this uh, particular day so uh, mr sahu you mentioned about that you know you have multiple products and uh, in in bikaner camel farm is one of the uh, hottest tourist destinations people uh, come from not only uh, remote parts of india but also from across the globe so uh, i would like to ask you what is the general feedback when they uh, have visited your campus when they leave what is the uh, impression they take with them uh, you put a very right questions actually uh, just prior to covid uh, we have a very good uh, tourist uh, this means this nrcc campus received a very good number of tourists unfortunately due to covid we received less but uh, definitely those who are visiting and those who are uh, uh, looking means uh, testing these products they are uh, liking these products because uh, when it is products development definitely products should be met testing it should be palatable it should be it should have a good flavor it should have a good color it should have a good packaging so all those things are there and marketing is uh, the marketing angle will be taken care of so that way uh, on, uh, uh, we are also uh, thinking to make parlors uh, nearly say uh, from morning to night free not only during the tourist time so that way again we are uh, thinking to extend this parlors to general public not to tourist only so that way there is possibility that we can uh, spread the products and spread the message uh, that uh, yes it is palatable and uh, uh, there is this is an unique product one can uh, take up and uh, at the same time there is some concern in this product making if you go for say heat processing for uh, a product development it's okay but the medicinal value Uh, may hamper so our focus is now uh, product development based on seed uh, uh, processing or we can say um, uh, fermentation we can go for we can go for fermented products this is another area yes. uh, 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 because uh, once camel milk is fermented mm-hmm. compared to all other species the camel milk bioactive peptides concentration and the whey milk this is two area which gives uh, more biomolecules which provides more biomolecules of therapeutic importance for many diseases like say for example if we uh, ferment the camel milk with a uh, inherent bacteria say lactobacillus then we is uh, analyzed there is 10 times increase in its antioxidant property oh that's great camel milk uh, camel milk is having antioxidant property but at the same time if you go for fermentation then the mil- antioxidant property is increased by 10 times so that way if you go for fermented products camel charge camel whey camel uh, any sorts of uh, the rabri which actually the traditional food of uh, rajasthan so yes. the rabri products we have prepared two three products here based on rabri and uh, world millet day we released that so th- this type of promotion is needed and uh, i think uh, in times to come uh, you people are there and nrcc is also uh, working on those lines and many products of uh which can uh, be easily popularized or which uh, accepts uh, means get good acceptance to the consumer can be marketed and this is one idea through startups through processing technology through marketing we can reach to uh, rest of the uh, rest of the rest of india you can say besides uh, rajasthan and gujarat
Yes. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Sahu, we had a wonderful time, you know, discussing about uh, camels and camel milk on this uh, occasion of World Camel Day. And uh, I think we both agree on this part that uh, we both hope that in the times to come, this uh, camel milk gains more popularity and uh, the whole ecosystem, ecosystem benefits from it. Um, I would like you to uh, share uh, a message on World Camel Day to our viewers. Uh, my message would be uh, uh, drink camel milk as a uh, therapeutic adjuvant and as a uh, 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 to means as a service to the mankind that is service to the mankind means if you drink camel milk like camel milk then definitely the people who are rearing camel they will get benefited ultimately because they will go for uh, dairy productions uh, besides sheep of the desert or the transport whatever transportation etc camel is uh, servicing the uh, looking towards camel with a diary angle will uh, be an additive avenue for the people who are reading camel. So if we, uh, my message in this uh, World Camel Day is in India, we have many, uh, means bovine milk plenty. So uh, uh, take bovine milk for your all other purposes, but take camel milk for your health purposes. Thank, thank you. Much. Thank you very much, Dr. Sahu. And uh, thank you for joining us on such a short notice. Uh, we are very glad that, you know, we had this uh, discussion together and uh, I believe there are a lot of uh, areas which we covered, which would be helpful to our viewers and uh, uh, other stakeholders. And uh, once again, uh, thank you. Have a nice day and uh, you. happy thank World you. Camel Day. Thank you. I also wish a happy World Camel Day. Thank you.